All right, guys, uh, this is Chin Fat, and we are uh, answering a question to a... Sorry, I said we. I'm not a Roy Louis, so I guess I am answering a question uh, for the uh, for, for uh, uh, one, of my view, one of our viewers. There you go again, our viewers. Our viewers, my we. Um, anyway, yeah, they are having trouble with their Sony with the Sony FX9. They were recording uh, a format that had uh, eight channels, so I'm just responding to this. And they were trying to do the proprietary proxy within Premiere Pro, and it was glitching out, and I was going like to stereo. And uh, so I've kind of tried to repeat this, and I'm kind of running into a very similar issue. I'll try kind of go through this quickly here. This is the file here that they gave me, and when you drop it in, when you this is the weird thing. When you drag and drop this into the timeline, at first it shows all eight channels. Over here, you select that. It shows, yeah, it's got eight channels uh, mapped to uh, mono, so these are eight mono channels on here. But the problem comes when it was proxying, it was almost changing the nature of these things for some weird reason. So if we go through that process here, I'm going to go to Media Encoder. Uh, I've got a couple of presets I'm saving in here, because this is something I have a little work around, I think, uh, that, that's finally working, but it takes a little extra step here. Uh, but so let, let's go ahead and just do what, what I mentioned before. And, and do the proxies on this regular uh, MXF file that came out of the Sony camera here. So I'm going to go and search uh, QuickTime here, and I'm going to go to QuickTime Proxy. I'm going to right-click on that and go to Preset Settings. We're going to create a uh, preset that we want to encode uh, our proxies to. So we've got uh, QuickTime here, pro pro based on ProRes Proxy. Uh, the items that we did have to change here was something like resolution. I'm going to uncheck the resolution and make this uh, either 1920 by 1080. This is a 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio. They're using UHD, so I could go 1280 by 720 as well and even get it down smaller and make it operate even faster. And I'm going to go up here. I'm going to name this uh, here Test Preset. The presets we create in uh, in Media Encoder, but you got to export it to a, a, an ingest uh, setting for for Premiere Pro, which is kind of weird, but that's just the way it is. So I created uh, this test preset. I'm going to go to Effects. We're going to make this. Uh, I like to burn the time code overlay onto it. Uh, I'm going to go back to audio, and then uh, so I got the video set. And now we got to set turn this down to eight mono channels, just like the nature of that very uh, file that we imported. So I'm going to add up to eight channels here. So we've got, got eight mono channels, so it's, it's mirroring it. Uh, now I'm going to show you the weird part here in a minute. I'm going to save as a co save a copy. It just saved that preset as a copy, so now I can get out of this. I can hit escape or cancel. And uh, here's my preset right there, my test preset. This is what where I was running into the original issue, but I've got these presets that I'm saving because I redid it with uh, another... I'll show you another way I did this. So uh, Anyway, all right, let's go to... So now I'm going to right-click on this test preset, and we're going to go to... Uh, create ingest preset and this is going to be for Premiere so I'm just going to call this test again test ingest so I got my preset and I got my ingest and this is going to be the one I export out to Premiere we're going to choose my um, preset that I just made that test preset right there that's one that I made and we're going to base the ingest settings off of that uh, preset there uh, you can choose the location uh, I'm just it doesn't matter where this is saving because it will change it when you go into Premiere anyway so I'm going to hit OK and now I'm going to right click on that ingest and I'm I'm going to export it so it can be used in Premiere Export Presets. I'm going to save it here. I've got another one that I've done right there, but this is going to be the test one that I'm keeping track of. So, um, so I'm going to go into Premiere, and we are going to proxy uh, all the media. This, I've only got one file here, but we're going to you can select all the media. If you right-click on it and go to Proxy, and we're going to Create Proxies, I'm going to add my ingest preset that I just created, that test one right there. I'm going to choose a location. I've already set it for my proxy folder, so that's good. So browse and hit it to my proxy folder. And now when I hit OK, everything should be honky-dory here, but you hit OK. And it sends it to Media Encoder. It does the encode. Done. Go back to Premiere. And uh, this is where it gets really weird now. So so now when I go over, hover over my... Um, um, my file here, this is the, the pr proxy. I'm going to turn my proxy on and off here. So here's my proxy off here and look at the uh, this has this is the way it was recorded it has one channel of audio here and one channel of audio here channels one and three have audio on them and they're mono channels uh, now the weird thing is when I hit proxy and I move my playhead around all of a sudden it puts it on all of these sounds and that is not the way this proxy file is just to make sure I imported that proxy file right into Premiere to look at the very nature of it and I drop that into the timeline here it looks like it's got all the same channels and look at this the proxy file since it's not doing that little toggle, but, but the actual proxy file acting alone as a standalone file is properly encoded with the right audio. So this is some weird glitch that's happening inside of, of Premiere. And even even weirder than this is if I delete this stuff here, delete that proxy file, and if I grab this uh, file here and I drop it into the into the timeline, and, and then I drop it drop it back in the timeline again and let go, 
it suddenly is just like one channel. So this is just majorly glitching out. I have no idea. It just, I think it's really just comes down to the Premiere just does not like proxy files with the with the, the, the nature of that MXF file uh, with the eight audio channels. I'm not sure why. Uh, so this is a wor workaround. I've, I worked on this for a while, tried to get it to, to work, and I could not get that to work. It kept reverting back to a stereo file. I tried all these different settings. I tried discrete audio channels versus mono audio channels. I even tried to different. I did tried to do ProRes uh, instead of ProRes. I even tried to do MXF to keep uh, to keep the the format the same, and it still. Uh, kept doing that with that audio file. For some reason, it doesn't like that audio file. Uh, so this is the workaround, and it's not one that you probably like, but first of all, I would recommend when you're shooting on that camera, uh, the X, F, 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 FX5, sorry, when you're shooting on that camera, uh, the FX9, uh, I would recommend not shooting it with eight channels. Go into the settings of the camera and set it up so it's only recording. Since you only really have, let's look at this again. Since you really only have... Uh, Two channels of audio, and it looks like this one, the, like the top one here, that one, and this one are mirrored with the exact same audio file. I'm guessing uh, you don't need to. You can set it up to just record one mono channel or one stereo channel. Uh, depends on if you're using an internal mic uh, or an in, uh, or an onboard microphone uh, that is an actual legitimate stereo microphone. You need to set this up and not record uh, using eight channels because uh, especially that's that's kind of set up uh, so you can record multiple audio uh, microphones if you're doing a broadcast settings where you're micing up like up anywhere from like I don't know like three to eight people. You could mic up every individual person and have their audio ISOed on on each individual channel there. And that uh, otherwise, if you're not using it, I would really recommend just recording a single mono channel or a single stereo channel and go inside the camera and set that up uh, before you record uh, next time with this camera. Um, anyway, so this is the workaround that I found here. I'm going to go to this file that I've imported. I would recommend uh, converting, I don't know if you've already been, if you've done a lot of editing on this already, you might have to deal with it if you have been. Uh, actually, there would be a way you could reattach it to the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the footage of what I'm going to do here using a Final Cut Pro XML uh, workaround. But anyway, we're going to grab this. I'm going to actually... So I'm just going to go to Media Encoder, and I'm going to transcode this. Uh, and this is going to be lossless compression. It's not going to lose any quality because we're going to do it to ProRes 422 uh, based on the Sony uh, settings compression that, uh, that is uh, adding a bit depth to it that it doesn't need, so it, it is considered lossless. So I'm going to import here, and I'm going to grab this file and import my MXF. I import all my media. If, you, if you're doing this to multiple files, just import all your media. Uh, you can uh, select all your media. You'd hit Command-A and select all of it, or Control-A and select all of it. And then you'd uh, change this to QuickTime here, if it's not already there. And then this one you're going to change to with the all selected. I don't have to do it all selected because I've only got one file, but if you have multiple files. Anyway, I'm going to click on this here. It'll, it'll warn me that I'm doing multiple files, and you say OK. And I'm going to go under Video. Go to. I'm going to keep the resolution and everything the same, because I'm going to make new uh, high-quality uh, clips, and these will replace my MXF files. I'm not, no longer going to use MXF files. I'm going to convert them all to ProRes 422 files, and then use those as my master files. They're lossless. They don't lose any quality, and then make proxies out of those. So I'm gonna go, and then it worked if, uh, for some reason. It liked the quick ti quick time videos. It didn't like didn't like the MXF with uh with eight, eight files. So uh, match source find ProRes 422. I'm gonna go to audio. This is where it will change a little bit. So you can do one of two things. Since I'm remastering this, I can do one mono channel. It will use channel one uh, to burn uh, to burn that, and it will use channel one. Uh, to burn the audio on there from, from from your first channel which had audio on it or you could just do it like like we were doing it before and go uh, mono channel layout one two three four five six seven now we've got eight all together eight channels on this and now it's kind of mirroring the original I'm going to choose a location I'm just going to put it right here in my downloads folder with the other one and video is set that's uh, mirrored uh, all the settings are matching those settings I have them all check, mark, check marked to match source uh, and the audio is, is matched as well I wish they had a match audio uh, configuration, but they don't. I, I think they really need to add that. So I hit OK, export that out, press play. Once that's done, I'm going to go back to Premiere and get rid of my MXS files. You can keep them on your hard drive, just uh, don't use them anymore. Now you don't have to ever look at those again. Now you can just go and grab your uh, lossless MOV files, and this will work a lot better. Import that. Now we're going to go to Media Encoder and do the, the, uh, the proxy process here. Since it's eight channels, I'm going to set, uh, th and this is the one that I've set right here. So you're going to, once again, do, you can type in quick time here, qu just type in quick, and go get the ProRes proxy one right here, right-click on it, and go to Preset Settings, 
and now you're going to rename it. And I named it that Sony FS or FXS uh, QuickTime name and named it Preset. So I know this is my preset that I'm setting. But now we're going to go to Video. I'm going to uncheck my 1920 by 1080, and we're going to do and uncheck uncheck the resolution here, and we're going to change this to 1280. You can leave it 1920 by 1080, which will work fine. But I like to change it to 1280 by 720, so it works a little faster. The rest of these you can leave check marked here. Um, actually, I'm going to uncheck frame rate, and I'm going to make sure it's 29.97 to match frame rate because those are the most important two things right there. The other things it can base on off source. I'm going to go to effects, and we're going to do a time code just so we can see the difference between the, the burn, uh, the the proxy, and not having proxy. Check mark that. Go to audio, and I'm going to change this to mono, and then add eight more channels. Sorry, seven more channels. And then I'm going to name this. I'm going to call this just a preset right now. But what I named this as, let me show you before. So it saves it, cancel that. Now I've got that preset saved right there. But I, I renamed it. It's already been done right here, which is the uh, QuickTime Proxy FX 720 preset. In fact, if I want to get rid of those, if I want to get rid of those because I'm doing it again, I'm going to copy that. Let's get rid of all this. And I'm going to rename that preset, that name. There we go. So that's my new preset right there. Now we need an ingest. So right click on it. Go to create, create ingest preset. And we'll call this one ingest instead. So ingest. Going to transcode the files to destination. You don't really need this, but it, it will re-ask you in, in Premiere. Quick time, and then we're going to choose my preset right there. Add that preset. And make sure you get that preset added. Hit OK. And there's my ingest. Right click on it. Export presets, put it right there, quick time, and just go back to Premiere, right click on all my media, on my new uh, uh, ProRes 422 files, and we're going to go to proxy, create proxies, add in just, this one's in there, so it's going to ask if I want to overwrite it, I'll just say yeah, I'll overwrite it. So I just added my new uh, pre preset in there, hit OK, and it's going to create the proxies, there it goes, all done. Go back to Premiere, drop it in here, drop it in the timeline. It has eight channels, and now uh, look at this on the proxy. When I switch back and forth, this audio, weird audio, does not add that audio waveform to all the proxy, which wasn't really on the proxy files that I did, so it was really, really weird. The way I was reading it was glitching out. But now I can quickly, there's my high quality, and there's my proxy footage, and it's working seamlessly. By the way, before you start editing, one thing that I recommend doing, since you have eight channels, is, and this will not change the nature of your of your files here, uh, but what you could do is you, uh, I would recommend right-clicking on, on all your files that have that style of audio, and you go to Modify, and go to Audio Channels. Audio Channels, uh, we're going to tell this, uh, we only need one of these channels. We don't need all those channels. There's that... Uh, the audio that's on that, the ambient noise that's on there that we might want to use. So I'm going to say number of clips, we're going to change it to one instead of eight. And it just modifies it. It's only accessing one channel. Now it's saying which source on, out of those eight channels do you want to use as this one audio channel. I'm just going to say number one had audio on it, had waveforms on it, hit OK. And now when you drag that in to edit, it only has one audio time, one, one audio track there instead of all those audio tracks. And so now when you toggle between your proxy and your regular, regular uh, high quality media it's uh, it doesn't change it back it just stays on that one file that's the way it reads it it only pulls one audio file into premiere it's way easier to edit this way so if you're editing do an in point out point and period to drop it in it just brings down that um, brings down that single audio channel rather than dropping all eight channels down there making a huge big bulky mess down there then you have to delete those anyway so there you go uh, so I hope this helps um, if you have any questions you can uh, comment and then maybe you can email me and we can get in closer touch and figure out what's going on but you know if you have any uh yeah uh, uh, especially if you're having some questions on how to set your camera up uh, i've not i've not i've only used an fx9 like i used one like a year or so ago i think and i haven't and i've only used it for one day and i haven't used it since but anyway yeah and then keep in mind once you export all these mo the, these files out to movs uh prores 422 movs uh you can if you want to you can dump the rest of your original footage i wouldn't do that but if you don't have a hard, enough hard drive space you could but I, once again i don't don't recommend that just in case but once again i don't recommend that just in case uh you need them for some reason uh but i would put the i would put the new prores 422 files in a, in, a, in its own folder and then put the proxies in their own folder and keep everything kind of organized so uh, yeah, so if you want to, if you have any questions, uh, send me a message. Thanks.